been a massive fan of Nicaragua. I think my first trip to Nicaragua was in 2000 and I've gone probably a dozen times since it's one of my favorite kind of, I don't know, one of my favorite places in Central America and misunderstood. I think it has a bad rap that it's not entirely uh, deserving of. I think most of them, when people think, Oh, is it safe to go there? Like it's one of the safest countries in Latin America. If you look at statistics, but it's got a bad rap dating back to like the eighties with the Contra Sandinista stuff, which was very, you know, this is politicians and international influence in Nicaragua when it comes down to the Nicaraguan people. They're humble, lovely people. The country has, you know, Atlantic Caribbean coast, beautiful lakes, volcanoes, culture, history. Um, and it's so close to visit. So Rancho Santana, um, here's the turn dog and I just a month or so ago, we were down there for about a week at Rancho Santana and I'd actually been to Rancho Santana like a long time ago. And, um, at the, at the time they were just building homes there because this is like a coastal community project. And, uh, actually when they were asking us for representation, I was like, kind of not wanting to go. Turney was going to go by himself. And then the last minute I jumped on, I was like, okay, I'm coming with you. And we had, we developed like the new hashtag for Rancho Santana. Cause I think during that week I said, Oh my God, this is so worth it. Probably like 6,000 times just because we were talking about how like you as travel advisors always come to us for options in Latin America. And you're like, these people want good surf. They want a luxury hotel right on surf. They want a private home. They want activities, but but they want beach time. They only want, you know, a five hour flight from the U S there's like all these requisites. And then with all the properties that we represent, it's like, you know, this would work, but this wouldn't work. And the branches of town, I'm like, this would work for so many requests that we get for Latin America, so, which you'll see uh, in this presentation. So um, Rancho Santana, we're gonna go straight into how to get there. Um, the re And actually I'm gonna give a little bit of history here um, as far as tourism in Nicaragua. So Nicaragua, like I talked about initially had really bad times during the eighties and, and kind of ending in 1990 with their civil war with the Contra um, rebels against the Sandinista party. You know, that was something us that, that grew up in the 80s was on the news all the time. And so it kind of still has a monkey on us back from them. But actually, Nicaragua, if you look at tourism arrivals from 1990 through to 2018, they were growing at like 15 percent annually. And in 2017, they had like 1.2 million people visit Nicaragua. And I think most of us that have been in the industry for a long time, you'll remember one of the hugest aspects of that was the was when Makul opened on the coast. Makul is just a few miles south of where Rancho Santana is, but Makul was part of Ober, so they had tons of marketing behind it and people were flooding into Nicaragua in 2017. 2018, they had some political unrest that was kind of violent. Um, it was centered mostly in Managua, but that 2018 with that political unrest that happened there, or civil unrest, it just completely stopped tourism in 2018. And then by 2019, when they were getting back on their feet, there was two back-to-back -back hurricanes, and then you rolled right into the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. So literally Nicaragua has been closed for like five and a half years um, with not flights, with no flight service into Nicaragua and tourists not going there. Things have been super calm there um, recently, and all the flights have started back up again in the last two months. So currently, these are the direct flights that you have into Managua. So you've got, um, you know, American Airlines from Miami. And so all the connections from the East Coast generally go through there. You've also got Houston direct flight. These, these are daily direct flights that go there. Um, you've got from via Mexico City. Um, us on the, the West Coast, like for me, when I fly down there, I either go via Houston or another great option is that um, Avianca. Um, their hub is in San Salvador. So I actually fly San Francisco to San Salvador, San Salvador to Managua. I can either leave at one o'clock in the morning and be in Managua at 10 a.m. or I can leave at 2 p.m. and be there at like 1030 at night. So that's a great option for people coming from the West Coast or West Coast people. You can also fly to Panama City for pretty much anywhere in the U.S. And then it's about an hour flight up to Managua. Um, there also are flights with Sansa. There's a daily direct flight between Managua and uh, San Jose. Talking about other ways to get there, there is a way to drive from Rancho Santana down to Liberia and Costa Rica. However, from our experience, that works better if you're going from Nicaragua into Costa Rica. The border crossing, land border crossing is really simple heading in that direction, whereas going from Costa Rica into Nicaragua, the land border crossing, uh, it takes a lot of time just because of the bureaucracy involved in going into Nicaragua. So in that case, we would recommend if people are coming from Costa Rica is to take the Sansa flights that go from um, San Jose up to Managua. There also is a there is an airport that's only like 15 minutes from Rancho Santana. Um, it's the Costa Esmeralda airstrip that's privately owned by the Palos family. That was actually built in combination with the McCool Resort 
the McCool Resort has is was shut down in 2018, and they don't have plans to reopen it, as far as what we understand. Um, what we and so that airstrip is also not open because that's also owned by the Payless family. And what we understand is basically just a disagreement between that family, who's kind of one of the the wealthiest family in Nicaragua, and you know disagreements with the government that they're not going to basically reopen McCool or the airstrip until the Ortega regime is out of Nicaragua. So that's neither here nor there when talking about Rancho Santana, but. Um, when you fly into Managua, getting down to Ranch Santana, it's about it's two to two and a half hours. I mean, Google Maps obviously gives you a longer uh, drive time, but it's about two to two and a half, depending if you're going to stop. Um, this at the moment, when Turning and I went down, we actually took this route, which they're in the process of paving. I mean, there's huge heavy machinery and everything. I'd say it's probably about 75% done. Why it's long right now is because you have to go all the way down to Rivas and then kind of back up to get to Rancho Santana. When this is done, that's going to shave probably an hour and 15 off of it. So you're talking maybe an hour, hour and a half drive from Managua airport to get to Rancho Santana. So Rancho Santana can provide this transfer for you, but if people are staying for more than four nights, the round trip transfers to the Managua airport are included. So that's how you get there. Um, so Sorry. getting into talking about real quick, just a uh, note with the Sansa flight in Costa Rica, it's important. Uh, it only runs Monday through Friday. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Um, so getting into talking about the ranch, just a quick overview. So like this is, it's tw 2,700 acres on this beautiful stretch of coastline um this is a coastal community so we, the history of this was actually it was six people from baltimore area that were friends that somehow had a connection in nicaragua and knew this guy who was selling this 2700 acre ranch they went down 1997 visited this like literally rode horses into this area and took helicopters in and saw this saw the five beaches on the property and were like we gotta buy this so they bought it and they weren't really sure what they were doing with it. You know, they started building their own homes. They're personally inviting some friends to build homes. And it kind of developed into this coastal community of like-minded people um, that they would sell lots of land to and people would build these houses. So you do have people that live at Rancho Santana year round. And then you have a lot of like, you know, part-time kind of sunbirds that spend part of the year here. And then some people that have just bought, um, bought and built homes there as like investment properties and as rental properties that only come down, you know, uh, a couple times a year and then they're rented out the rest of the year. But what's happened is that as they did that, they realized they needed more visitors to come to Rancho Santana. So over the past uh, 10 years or so, they've built out condos, casitas, and a hotel and all the infrastructure and amenities. So now it's like this entire coastal community. So you do have some residents there, but they're really now in this stage of getting more people coming as visitors to it. So on the property, just you know, high level overview, you've got five beaches, three of those are completely private on the ranch. We've got ho the hotel, we've got condos, we've got private homes, um, tons to do there. It's got one of the best spas I've seen um, in Central America as well, and a lot to do. So let's dive into it. This property is so big that the way I'm kind of breaking it down is that I'm going to go through kind of different areas of the ranch. We're going to start with kind of accommodation areas. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about the different beaches and the different areas and the different excursions that go on there. Um, we're going here to the inn. This is kind of the heart of uh, Rancho Santana. This is where the concierge is, the guest services, um, most of the you know amenities are right when you drive into the ranch. Um, you get here. So this building is where the 17 room boutique hotel is and the main pool. And these are restaurants and conference rooms and kids clubs and all this stuff. Um, so we're going to kind of peek in here first into the end building. So I love their architectural style. I feel like walking in here, it was almost kind of like Santa Barbara esque, um, almost like the California colonial mission style um, building. So this is kind of the inner car courtyard of the inn when you come in from the parking area and past the concierge and guest services and walk into the building. And you, you can see you're looking straight out onto the ocean there. So this is the back patio looking on onto the Pacific. Um, they do have the whole pool area there. There's a beautiful bar and palapas and Tony and I drank our share of rum and cokes here um, together. And this is situated in the very northern part of Rancho Santana. And you're looking north. This is what's called Playa Santana. Um, you can walk this beach. It probably takes about 30 minutes to get up to these rocks here. Um, and then beyond that is the area called Popoyo. So you have this Playa Santana is the main beach right in front of the inn there. So that's kind of the lookout point just beyond the pool to check the surf. You can see the people surfing right here um, along that beach. 
And so this inn, they do have a 17 room boutique hotel here. So you've got rooms here that range from the kind of the basic rooms on low season are starting at $390 a night, which includes breakfast and activities and all the amenities of uh, branches Santana up to $600 a night for a simple room that's during festive season. And then suites from 700 and low season up to 1100 a night that sleep four to five people in the suites in the inn. So we're just going to show you a couple of pictures of the rooms in the inn. Beautiful, beautiful room. So they're on the second level so that everyone has their own outside balcony. So this is obviously a twin room. These are the king size room, just so you can see a little bit of the quality. And, you know, that's one other thing that I kept saying about Ranch Santana is like the quality of the buildings here and the furnishings. They actually have their own construction company because of all the homes that were built on Ranch Santana. But they have their entire woodworking and furniture building company on the property as well. So all of this furniture is custom built by local Nicaraguans here in Rancho Santana. Um, so everything's custom done, beautifully, beautifully done. This is one of the, I think it's a Piedra Terre suite. Um, you can connect these with a regular guest room to have like adjoining a suites for a family if they want to stay in the inn. And of course, these are good that people that just want access to like be able to walk straight down to the bar, straight down to the restaurant, straight down to Playa Santana. The hotel rooms are a great deal and you're right in the heart of uh, all the activities. So here's just the view um, looking out from one of the rooms in the inn that's looking north along Playa Santana, one of the five beaches that you access from Rancho Santana. And another shot there at more at low tide. Um, a few of the things in the inn down um, on the first level of the inn, you have El Cafe. So this is the breakfast restaurant. This is open every single morning from breakfast. Um, great place. I mean, this menu, I love their menu here. It's like acai bowls and like gallo pinto and egg bowls and pastries and incredible Nicaraguan coffee. So that's kind of the morning gathering place. Everybody's going to El Cafe and sitting out on this patio, looking out at the ocean, having breakfast and coffee um, there. Also in the end, this is one of four restaurants on Rancho Santana is uh, La Finca del Mar. This is more their kind of like fine dining restaurant, kind of the, the more upper class of, of their four uh, dining options on the property. And that's the main bar area. So kind of a gathering place for residents and for guests staying at the inn or the condos or the residences is in Finca del Mar. Um, the bar, of course, very important. And so this is kind of indoor, outdoor. So if you want to sit outside or want to sit inside, this is the main restaurant, Finca del Mar, in, um, in the inn. And fantastic food, fantastic, fantastic food. They also have a kids club there. So we have a lot of families that come and families that live there. So this kids club is is available and is included in the rate. So if families are coming and want the kids to go do stuff and they take the kids like all over the ranch to go like look for monkeys and go to explore different beaches and do activities plus arts and crafts. So you've got the kids club at Rancho Santana, you know, Nicaragua is super famous for their cigars and for their rum and they have a beautiful humidor here. So people that are into Nicaraguan cigars and rum, you can have a blast at Rancho Santana just in Nicaragua. Um, so that was the hotel room. So the hotel, the 17 room boutique hotel and kind of the nerve center. Now this little bridge that goes over this river flowing out into um, Playa Santana is going to take us over to one of the residences. And so walking across this little bridge, just like a minute or two, you can see that's the inn. That's the pool at the inn. And over here you have the residences. So the red residences are three bedroom beachfront condos. So people that don't want something more than a hotel room, they want a bit more space. All of these are three-bedroom units. So this is an interior of one of the three-bedroom residences here. Beautiful living room, beautiful kitchens. And you can see the just some detail of the bedrooms here. So obviously the ground level ones, you walk straight out um, kind of onto the pool area, onto the beach. And then the rooms upstairs uh, have their own patri patios. But all of these are facing the beach. So there are three-bedroom beachfront condo units. And did I put cost there? Yeah, so for these are like $900 a night, low season, up to $1,500 a night during festive season, they sleep six people. It's a fantastic deal. And this includes breakfast and includes access to all the amenities and excursions on Rancho Santana itself. So, um, you know, families of four, families of six that want beachfront condo, this is a great option staying there. Um, the residence as well, this is a separate pool from the one that's over at the inn across that little footbridge. So those condos have their own pool area. And actually, this is only like a quarter of the pool, um, this picture here. It's a massive, massive pool area. So there's plenty of space for everybody and all these loungers around it. Um, another option for accommodation. So maybe it's a family of four that doesn't want to pay for a three bedroom thing. Um, they have these six uh, garden casitas. These are kind of behind the, the inn not on the beach side, but behind kind of in the, in the, in the garden area um, of the inn. 
these are fantastic for families of four. And I actually think personally, just being as a parent myself, if I was going and I had little, little kids that weren't super comfortable, that, um, like around pools and stuff, this is where I'd want to be because it's super calm back here. It's super quiet. And also there's not pool or open water, ocean or, or pools right there. I mean, these things go for 450 in low season up to 700 in high season at night. And they're wonderful. You have your own little kitchen and then there's two bedrooms off to either side. So this is perfect for a family of four. Actually, since we've been back and representing us, I have like five or six families in my neighborhood in California that have booked these out for spring break upcoming in April because they see the surf, they see this and they're going. And this is the what most people have gone for is these garden casitas. So that's just one of the pictures of, of one of the garden casitas. Um, also on the property, they have their own little store there, La Tienda. Um, the reason why I'm putting this in here is obviously, you know, if you're staying in the hotel room, you're going to go down and you're going to eat in the restaurant in the inn and have breakfast there, or you're going to go to the other restaurants on the property, which I'm going to talk about, but they have this wonderful little store here. Um, so if you're staying in either the, the condos or you're staying in the casitas, you have your own kitchen and so you can go here and buy like breakfast supplies. Um, they have wonderful like prepackaged food and this is all stuff coming out of their own kitchen. So you can get like, you know, things, a guy, Pinto, like literally like prepared wraps, sandwiches, um, all the stuff and other imported goods. So you can kind of, you know, go here and buy provisions to to stock your own little condo or your casita or you can ask them ahead of time if you want specific groceries in your unit before you arrive they can send you a shopping list and have stuff there and it's also like you all remember as kids you go stay at resorts and it's fun to ask your parents like hey you have some money to go get ice cream so you've got that option they can kind of walk over to the tienda and grab their ice cream which kids always love uh, on vacation so we talked about the 17 room boutique hotel we talked about the three bedroom condos we talked about the two bedroom casitas. And then the other thing, which is amazing about Rancho Santana is the, the variety of private homes and villas. So they actually have 28 homes on this 3000 acre ranch that are available for rent. And again, these are uh, you know owned by different individuals um, that put them into the rental program that which is managed by Rancho Santana. So the rates are commissionable to you here. And there's everything from three bedrooms up to five bedroom. There's beachfront, there's beach view, there's what mountaintop ones. Um, these, like, well, I'll show you kind of the price sheet and it's also available on our website, but I mean, you have some of the three bedroom homes uh, in the low season are starting at $500 a night. And then the biggest homes during festive are $4,500 a night. Um, a lot of these homes actually come with their own four by four vehicle. So, you know, so that your own rental car, the thing is Rancho Santana is private, right? So like the roads around here, I'm going to get into showing you the different beaches and kind of the extent of the land, but it's such a, a, a great deal to actually have your own vehicle included. And, you know, people that would be worried about, oh, I can't drive in a foreign country. Like this is a private property. The only people driving around are people that are at the ranch and their dirt roads going to the different beaches and different areas of the ranch. So having that is awesome. Backing up on that to get around the ranch, if you're staying at the condos or the inn or the residences and you don't have a car, it's not a problem. You can just go to the concierge and say, hey, I want to catch a ride over to Playa Los Peros or to go to La Boquita or go to Playa Escondida. And they also do run an hourly shuttle across the property as well. So you do have access to get around this ranch. So um, the homes are located all over the ranch. Um, I'm not going to go into specific homes. I'm just going to talk about these and kind of go through some pictures to show you because all the homes are different and they all have different amenities. Um, so they almost all have pools. I think there's only like two homes that don't have pools just because of the architectural style. Um, you know, some of this is, I think that uh, VS that are looking for something and they actually have a couple homes that are close by to one another. And so people have rented out like multiple homes in the same area so they can like spend each day gathering at different homes. So just an amazing option. I mean, we've been having, I think particularly since the pandemic, there's been more and more of a demand for private homes and villas. We've seen ourselves. We obviously have Pete Pasha Beachfront Estate in Santa Teresa, which uh, sleeps 20. It's 10 bedroom, but we have people coming saying that's too big for us. Here at Rancho Santana, you have three to five bedroom homes, 28 of them to choose from. So it's a great place to go. Um, some of their furnishings are awesome. I love these, these bunk bed things and some of the homes that they have with these, like four kids in one room. Just, just great options and different styles. This is like a super cool colonial Hacienda style home overlooking the coast. And that has its own kind of retro vibe for it. 
So again, just showing you options of the different homes. I'm not going to tell you which houses they are because there's so many to know about. But literally, if you get in touch with us or with Rancho Santana and give us your dates and the kind of the parameters of how many people are in your group, they will get back to you and say over those dates, these are the different homes available. They give you links and that's awesome. You click on the link and then actually every one of these homes, they have video fly through that they did by drone all around the property and through like a walkthrough of the entire villa so people can get a really good layout um, of the homes. Um, and here's an example of just the kind of rate sheet um, for a quarter of the homes available showing like how many people it sleeps, how many bed and bath, what the square footage is, and then rates. And you can even see, even though this is cut off, you know, this is just showing January dates. There's some homes here, like a six sleep, six people, three bedroom, three bath for 600. Um, and that season up to, you know, 3000 for a 9,000 square foot home. So just to give you an idea of the variety of, of homes there. So we've got a few questions uh, to address really quickly. Um, Diane wants to, uh, to know about the chef option. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I didn't even talk about that. So the thing is with the homes, obviously you do have access to four different restaurants on the property. So you can go do that. I think they do include breakfast at, um, at El Cafe for any of the accommodation options, but looking at the price of those homes, if people want to have a private chef do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, for them at the home during their entire stay, they can arrange that for them. If people want their place stocked with their own groceries and they want to cook their own meals, Rancho Satana can have that for you. If people want to say, you know, we want to do like just dinners in our house, private dinners, but other meals, breakfast and lunch, we're going to do elsewhere. You can arrange that. If people want to just have two nights while they're staying there over a week to have private dining and have a chef come in, you can, you can handle that. So pretty much it's completely up to you and the guest how much you want to have a private chef come into the home and do that for you. Or if you want to be totally independent and go to the store and buy your groceries and eat at the different restaurants. So that's another fantastic thing there. So I think that looking at the cost of it, you know, particularly for the quality and the size of these villas that they're renting there. And then when you add on the private chef thing, I mean, it's, it's a total bargain there. And then Carol wants to know uh, best worst times to go, but I think we'll cover that here at the end. Yeah, I actually don't have it. I'll let you do that at the end. So you remember that turning. Okay. <laughs> um, so what I want to do here is kind of talk through the five different beaches, because that's one of the biggest draws of Rancho Santana is the access to not just one beach, but five beaches on the property, three of those being completely private. And I'm going to talk about kind of all the other different activities and amenities that exist on the ranch as well. So we were kind of already talking about this area, the main um, Playa Santana area. So that's kind of the main beach. If you're staying in those residents or condos or the casitas, um, this has fantastic surf at mid to high tide. And then when it's low tide, the surf is less. And so it's better for boogie boarding and stuff, but this is kind of the main beach of people staying there to go lay out on and chill, um, go for, you know, family walks, kids can boogie board there. If you're a good surfer, it's got incredible beach break up and down and a killer point, uh, left point break right in front of the restaurant, essentially. Um, that's actually the left point break right in front of the, the inn. So you've got Playa Santana. And then right behind the inn, they have an equestrian center. And this was, again, and there's an example of residents that bought homes there. There's a lot of people, other horses. So Rancho Santana, okay, we're going to build stables. So most of the horses are actually owned by residents there. And then they can also have their horses included in trail riding programs. So they do do trail rides there and they do beach rides. So this is actually horseback riding on Playa Santana right in front of the inn. So, I mean, all day long, you see people going up and down the beach on the horses there. But then there's other trails throughout the ranch. Ranch. If they want to get up in more into the mountains, you can do that as well. Um, and next beach going south along the coast, you got down to Playa Rosada. Um, Playa Rosada, this is where a lot of the beachfront and oceanfront homes uh, and villas that are for rent are in the Playa Rosada area. Not all of them, but there's quite a few there. Um, the other thing is that they have in this area, one of the other restaurants, one of the other for lunch and for dinner, they have La Boquita, and this is a pool club. So there's a beautiful pool there and it, it is a restaurant. And what they focus on there is brick oven pizzas and like tapas and paellas and stuff like that. Food here is off the hook. Turney, do you agree? I mean, totally. pizzas were incredible. And then all the different yeah, yeah, pizzas and stuff. Up. But it's a place to chill in the afternoon, in the evening, you know, with some rum and coke, some beers and sh and like share food. So the killer spot, Rake Beachfront. This beach as well during the surf season, which is like June, July, August is when they get the most swell. There's also an amazing, like a really challenging uh, point break here as well. Um, so here's just an example of the pizzas and the paellas and stuff there. So that was Playa, oh, there's so many beaches, Playa Rosada. And then going down a little bit further, you get down to Playa Escondida. So Playa Escondida, and again, so Playa Rosada, Playa Escondida, and Playa Duna are three that can only be accessed by people on the ranch. 
The other two, there is public access outside of the ranch to them. Playa Escondida is kind of the long, the longest private beach there. This is a natural, undeveloped beach. Um, a lot of the hiking and biking trails on the property kind of converge and come down to Playa Escondida, but this is where people want to go and not see other people and stroll on the beach. Um, you know, take a paddleboard out here. Um, and really get away from other people, this is the place to do it. Um, they also have turtle hatching that happens, and it happens here on Playa Escondida. The turtle hatching here, these are green sea turtles, and they actually hatch year-round. Um, the kind of the bigger concentration of hatchings are January, February, March, but they have hatchings every month, and they work with a turtle rescue project there that has, um, you know, built embankments for nesting. So as you're a guest there, no matter you know, what time of the year you're going and you stop by, if you want to see turtle hatching, you can stop by the concierge and ask them to let you know when hatchings are happening. And I'm not a biologist, but I understand it has a lot to do with cycles of the moon. Um, and they can kind of predict it at least a week ahead of time about what, what time and what days of the month the hatchings are happening. So this is super awesome for, I mean, pretty much everybody, but particularly for kids to be able to go down there and watch the hatchings happen and see them go out to sea and help them make their journey. That's all at uh, Playa Escondida itself. Um, so that's Playa Escondida. Another kind of undeveloped natural beach there is Playa Duna. Um, this is there's an this is an incredible viewpoint. That first picture of Tony and I in the presentation that was us up above Playa Duna. Um, but what people go to Playa Duna for is again a lot of the trails from biking and hiking head down to Playa Duna. So you've got great views, but they have this, this amazing, like, I don't know, 300 foot tall sand, natural sand dune on Playa Duna. And so this is included too, if people want to go sandboarding, they just stop by the concierge and they'll go out with one of the staff from Rancho Santana, hike in here, and uh, you just blast down the sand dune. So again, super fun little half day adventure excursion for kids, for families, for adults, anybody is off in Playa Duna. And then the other big beach is on the far southern portion of Rancho Santana, and this is called Playa Los Peros. And then we have also other amenities on Playa Los Peros. So right there, um, this is actually where we do all of our surf lessons. Um, they do do a, a, an hourly shuttle from the inn down to Playa Los Peros, or you have your rental car staying in one of the villas, or if you want to go in off times, you just go to the concierge and ask for a ride down to Playa Los Peros. It's probably a 10-minute drive, 10, 15, you say? Attorney, it's probably like 10 yeah. right from the no, end. No more, no more than 10. There. But when you arrive there, you've got two things here. You've got the surf shop, and then you have another restaurant called La Taqueria. Um, and then right in front of it, they have all these hammocks you can lounge in um, by the beach. So um, this is one of the other full restaurants that's open for lunch and for dinner. And, uh, you know, it's right beachfront on Playa Los Peros. And it's like huge variety of tacos. So just share food, grind some tacos, drink some cold beers. They have an incredible tequila bar as well. So you've got tacos, beers, and, and cervezas at La Taqueria right on the beach. And then they have the full service surf shop here run by a super cool uh, woman named Dominique. And so here they've got surfboard rentals. Um, they have a fantastic, people that are surfers, they, I wouldn't bring my own boards. They have a fantastic quiver of like really high quality boards that you can rent there. They got boogie boards, they got long boards, they got foam boards, they do surf lessons and they have this whole shopping. You want to do some shopping there. This is like a, this is like straight out of Newport beach or something, this surf shop. And this is again, is where they do uh, the surf lessons right in front of La Takadi and, um, and our entrance is where the waves are, are more mellow to do kind of the surf lessons. But people that are serious surfers, um, this beach, when you walk down five minutes down the beach, five, 10 minutes, you get to one of the most famous drop uh, breaks in Nicaragua called Ponga Drops. And then you walk another 10 minutes and you get down to Colorado's, which you get this, these barreling tubes. So people that are just you know interested in surfing, doing a lesson, great Rancho Santana. And for experienced surfers, this is like a mecca. You have access to the best breaks in some of the best breaks in Central America are right there uh, at Rancho Santana. Um, also, another big amenity that Rancho Santana has, which not a lot of our properties have, is a really fantastic, complete spa. This spa, the Spa in El Bosque, is actually back up near the inn. It's actually behind the Garden Casitas. After you go through the organic gardens of Rancho Santana, where they produce all the food, you go up into the hill, and that's where the spa is. Um, Tony and I had a little spa day, didn't we, buddy? No, it sure did. Uh, it was it was great, man. Great. I'm not a spa guy, but we really did. You buy the plunge, uh, cold plunge yet? I've been cold plunging at home since I got home. I super got into it. So yeah, <laughs> we we had like a massage. We didn't do a couple's massage, but we did the massage. Um, beautiful changing rooms, beautiful facilities. Done all this teak wood place to hang out, drink tea. They've got all the like you know Gregorian chant music going on. 
with it. Um, and every massage be prior to your massage, you get like 30 minutes in, in what they call the grotto. They have a couple of these grottos, which are jacuzzis with cold plunges. So Tony and I were egging each other on pushing how much, how much longer we could go in the cold plunge, but I got super addicted to the cold plunge thing. So you got your, your hot and cold plunge prior to your massage. And then they have maybe five or six, of these different little, um, uh, massage pavilions where you'll, you'll get your massage or your, uh, pedicures or whatever treatment you have. They're kind of private. They're, they're totally private, each of the individual things. And then just uh, up above Sa- it, Sasha, Sasha asked if there's a sauna. Um, there's not just the jacuzzi and plunge pool. No, no, you know, they're going to build one, but, yeah. um, <laughs> there'll be one eventually. <laughs> yeah, there'll be one eventually. And so just up above the spa, they've got the yoga studio. And so they do sunrise yoga for residents, guests, incredible place. I mean, the view from this place looking out, that's looking north over Playa Santana. Um, another cool thing they do there is that because with all the residents that are around there and the guests is that like every month they have kind of different theme and they'll have special guests, whether they're artists. When we were there, there was a lady named Sasha who was like a, a you know, lifestyle chef and, and yogi. And she had like different dinners throughout that were happening throughout the month. And each week where we went and had like a, a total um, raw vegan dinner, and there was guest plus residents. And I really like that fact, like the fact that the residents that are there, most of the residents I would say are Californians or surf families that have a home there. And so we went to these dinners and to these wellness events and it was a mix of, you know, just temporary guests like us. And then there was residents. So you get to know residents when you're there through these activities and these offerings that are happening. And it's kind of fun because when you go in the bar, you go in a restaurant, you go down to Playa Los Pedos, you might run into Chris or you might run into, you know, whoever who you met who's a resident and it kind of feels like you're part of the community for a week, which is really cool. So you got the yoga there and special events. They have killer e-bikes on it. And I didn't go, but Tony went for a rip around the biking and you were like totally impressed. Like the trail network was legit. Yeah. It's, it's really incredible how well they maintain the trails. Um, they have different types of obstacles and, and berms and you can actually go all the way up uh, to the chapel, which you're about to see, and then all the way down to Playa Escondida. So it's pretty miraculous being able to bike, you know, through the mountains and uh, maybe see some monkeys along the way and then end up a beautiful beach. Yeah. No, I mean, seeing those pictures, like the whole, like the wooden obstacle, like drop off and the berms, like it's a full professional built. I think it's like 25 miles of mountain bike trails they've built and counting. So there's a, this whole mountain bike um, option when you're there. They've also... They had the tennis courts and basketball courts, but of course, pickleball is the craze. I'm even in the pickleball craze at home. <laughs> we have like six families. We play pickleball together and they just redid the courts there. So like everybody's loving pickleball nowadays. So you got pickleball, tennis and basketball courts that are there. Um, they do throughout the week. They'll have certain times on certain of the beaches where they'll do bonfires and stargazing and do like s'mores and stuff for kids. So those happen um, throughout the week. Um, there's lots of howler monkeys. I mean, there's howler monkeys everywhere in Central America, but this is a free included thing that if you have a family there and they want to go see monkeys, you just go let the concierge know. And then when they spot a troop, they'll come find you and they'll take you to wherever on the ranch the, the howler monkeys are at the moment to go check them out. Um, they do do fishing charters out of there, out of a nearby room, marina. Um, this is something that actually in the last week, we've had a lot of bookings where people have requested fishing charters. They can do onshore or offshore there, but the the sport fishing is, is fantastic in Nicaragua. So that's an option for it. And they even have their own chapel up on this hilltop, the Capilla Santa Ana. And it's uh, they've actually brought a lot of the the stained glass from, from Maryland for the owners in Baltimore. There's a connection, but they actually have a lot of weddings there, which was surprising. Like they said, what's one of their biggest things is they do a lot of weddings on Rancho Santana. And I remember asking Vita about that. It was like, why is that? And she's like, well, you know, weddings are super expensive and people like nice weddings and you can do that there. You know, it's a fraction of the cost to fly everybody in Nicaragua and have a wedding there versus say doing it in Southern California or New York or something. Um, it's a little bit too, you mean like this place is just so all enveloping, like the sustainability issues are no joke. Um, this is their organic garden. They're at a point now where 80% of all the food that's served in the restaurants and bars and in their in La Tienda on the property is grown on site, 80%. Um, Rancho Santana, the community and the, the company, um, they completely fund a medical clinic for the community for uh, Limon Uno and Limon Dos, which are the two closest communities there. Um, they Rancho Santana is the largest employer in the area. They employ over 450 people year round. They also do things. They, they sponsor a local surf team. They have the Rancho Santana surf team, which are like the kids of the employees there. 
They have the Rancho Santana local baseball team. So there's a ton of community engagement. Um, you know, you can tell when you go stay a place how the locals feel about it. And you can just see with the employees there and talking with the employees, like how much they appreciate what Rancho Santana has become for them in terms of career advancement, education, and support of their local communities um, through everything. And there's the gym. I actually don't have pictures of the gym, but there's a killer gym. That of course, Tony went to and I didn't, <laughs> but they, they kind of built it, but it's in the community, right? Yeah, it's, it's in Limon 1. So the town outside of Rancho Santana is Limon 1 and Limon 2. And actually, Rancho Santana helped um, create an organization where they made a community center. So um, typically, people in the community have to pay or have be, have be a member of this gym. But for anyone staying at Rancho Santana, it's free. It's right outside the gate. Um, if you have your own car, you can drive there. If not, if you're staying at the end or the residences, um, you know, you can just get a ride from the staff and very clean and cool to go to. So yeah, I, mean, they have, like, um, I think we'll eventually have one on site, but for now it's, it's a great option. Um, and then if you're the thing, there's sustainability stuff. Like I, this blew me away, man. We went, we went kind of a behind the scenes tour with the CEO, Luke, who's like 31 years old or something. Um, they have this massive solar farm they built. So like all of the, basically all the electricity for the inn and the residences and that area of it is 100% solar for them the homes not because the home since they're individually owned they have to be plugged into the the you know the local power grid um they would be able to provide the the energy for all those with it but just legally they can't like i said they have their own woodworking shop furniture shop um they have their construction company so it's like beyond just you know the residents all that like they they have multiple companies that are based out of ranch santana there which employ tons and tons of local people so that's great and um, just to give you some kind of faces with your coming to us for a request, um, great thing to celebrate uh, International Women's Day. This is the girl boss team at Rancho Santana that you'll be dealing with. You've got Vera Bonilla and Joanna, who are sales and marketing partners of it. Um, so they would be the ones you're kind of contacting with for reservations and request. And then Andrea Prado, some of you might recognize her. She was actually the assistant general manager and head of guest services at Morgan's Rock for like a decade, but she's now come to work at Rancho Santana. So, uh, you might recognize her face. So fantastic, super professional team of all Nicaraguan women that are kind of the management behind, um, Rancho Santana that you would be dealing with. And then kind of going out from Rancho Santana and talk about Nicaragua as a destination, um, and what this pairs well with, I mean, Rancho Santana is a great, you want to go to some place for a week beach vacation resort type thing. That's not, you know, a global chain resort, but that's privately owned and it's its own unique experience. You can just go to Rancho Santana, do the two hour drive from Managua and then go back to Managua. But if you want to do more in Nicaragua, the obvious is obviously Granada, which is the old colonial capital. You pass this and route down to Rancho Santana. But a lot of people want to combine, you know, time on the beach with time kind of cultural adventure exploring Nicaragua. So the easiest thing is to combine Rancho Santana with time on Lake Nicaragua and Granada, which is the beautiful old colonial capital, great architecture and history. We do represent Hikaro Island Eco Lodge. That's on one. It's on a private island on Lake Nicaragua, 15 minute boat ride from downtown Granada. So that works really well. You can do your time at Rancho Santana and then come spend a couple nights at Hikaro or vice versa um, to kind of make a, a, a more complete itinerary in Nicaragua. This is looking up on the Mambacho volcano, which is active. There's a lot of active volcanoes in Nicaragua. But from Granada, you've got access going up to Mambacho. There's incredible zip lining, hikes in the cloud forest, exploring the Las Isletas, all the 365 islands in, in Lake Nicaragua. You can go, this is Masaya Volcano at sunset. You go visit markets in Granada. This is a, a cigar rolling factory. So you've got all of that. And like for us, we just kind of put this in as an example of this is like a, a week long trip. Someone has spring break and they want to go to Nicaragua. You do a seven day, seven day, six night. This is arriving into Managua. It's only a 45 minute drive to get to Granada. 15 minute boat ride. You get to Hikaro for the arrival night. And then the next day have a full day of adventures in Granada at Mombacho. Spend a second night in Hikaro and then picked up and then go to Rancho Santana for four nights on the beach and then back to Managua. Awesome trip. Totally awesome trip combo. Um, so that's my spiel. What other questions we got or comments? Yeah, we've got we've got some questions that we can cover. Um, a lot of the questions seem to be about the vehicle um, situation, and uh, let me just um, elaborate. Basically, what we're saying is, if you do rent a vehicle, it doesn't have to be upon arrival in Managua. 
you can actually uh, get the transfer as as usual uh, from Rancho Santana. And once you arrive at the actual property is when you'll have your vehicle. So you can drive anywhere uh, among the property pretty easily. I did see a question asking uh, Dar Darcy asked if there's excursions uh, in place of interest to visit nearby. Uh, but typically, yeah, there totally are. And it's usually Granada or Vulcan Messiah. That's why it's great to combine. Um, but when you're at the property, yes, it is nice to have a vehicle. And we totally recommend it if uh, your clients are staying at one of the ocean uh, view houses. If Most you're of, at the rest of the homes included, they have the cars included, whether you use it or not. So, right. Yeah. And if you're at the inn or the residences, it's a lot easier um, to. Ask the staff for a ride. Basically, everyone who arrives gets their WhatsApp number. So you can WhatsApp the concierge at any time and ask for a ride um, at any point. Yep. Um, seasonality. Yes. And everyone is saying um, for, the ride is complimentary from Managua only if you're saying four nights or more. Um, we'll, ch we'll check on that now verifying the follow-up email. But yeah, uh, in terms of seasonality and best times to go, I mean, December and January in terms of weather are probably going to be your best window for, for no rain. And since the rainy season is just ending and it's transferring over to the dry season, um, everything is so green and lush. The weather doesn't tend to be as hot. So you get some nice breeze and um, it's, it's pretty comfortable, but getting into February, through May, it will be dry and it will definitely be more hot um, and not as lush green, uh, but you won't have to worry about rain. And as Clark mentioned earlier, uh, the summer, like June, July, and August are probably the best for surfing. Um, and it's like Costa Rica, you can expect sunny mornings, rainy afternoons. And then from uh, September to November is when you'll definitely see the most rainfall. Yep. Um, it seemed to have spurred a lot of questions about that whole like rental car thing. You don't need, you don't need to have a rental car. Like when you go there, they staff, they have their own vehicles, they have their own fleet and they take people around their property. So you don't need one. If you're staying in the homes there, generally most of the homes have a vehicle included if people want it to drive around the ranch. Um, and I was going to say as well for surfing, cause this is, you know, also a big surf destination. There's waves here year round. They have 365 days a year offshore winds, which groom the waves. It's just like June, July, and August, there's going to be a lot more swell, but there's swell throughout the year. So that's the thing. Um, distance from Granada to Rancho Santana, it's about hour and 45 minutes. So that's one thing is that if people want to stay at Rancho Santana and want to go to Granada, Mombacho, Masaya, do all that stuff, you can do it as a day trip from Rancho Santana. You don't need to stay at Hikro or you don't need to stay in Granada. You can do it as day trips from Rancho Santana. It just involves more driving um, is one thing. Um, and we can set that up through Rancho Santana as well. They can uh, provide rates for a day tour and everything like that. You can do all that yeah. stuff. Um, and then obviously I was expecting this. A lot of people were asking about what about McCool, how does this compare to McCool and Morgan's Rock, which I can answer because I've stayed at, at all of them. So, you know, Morgan's Rock is fantastic. Morgan's Rock is much closer to the Costa Rican border. They have more people coming from Liberia to go up to Morgan's Rock and back. Morgan's Rock for me, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a uh, a very kind of remote, desolate beach. Um, their tree houses are absolutely incredible. There's all these stairs up and down from the different tree houses of Morgan's Rock down to the restaurant, bar, and beach. I feel personally like Morgan's Rock would be a great romantic getaway. I actually went and spent, I was in February 2020 with my wife at Morgan's Rock um, by them. Great service, great staff, cool place. It's very eco lodge and very remote, and you kind of don't see other people. But I don't feel like there isn't, there's not as many amenities and I feel like not as much to do directly on the property, even though they do offer some different, like, you know, milking cow things and stuff on the farm. It's kind of the place if you want to lay in a hammock um, and read a book and not really do anything, then Morgan's Rock is a great place to completely disconnect from the world and not do anything. Um, I can't speak badly about Morgan's Rock. It's a fantastic property, but I think it's for the right uh, profile. I don't think like, I wouldn't really want to take my kids there. I think my kids would get a little bit bored as far as Morgan's Rock. And I also think that the way that all the steps up and down from the the casitas down to the beach with like drop-offs and stuff. I think if you had young kids, I'd be really nervous about that. Plus it's also, if you're going to go down the beach, you have to be ready. If you get down you're like, Oh, we forgot the, you know, Johnny forgot his blow up, whatever. He's like, okay, hey, who's walking back up to the treehouse? Um, there's that McCool, McCool clothes. I mean, McCool was, 
um, is, is owned by the Payless family, which is the wealthiest family in Nicaragua. They own Florida Cania Rum. They own the super wealthy family. They also own Nekupe Sporting Ranch. Um, you know, McCool, I, McCool, I'd say is a different vibe. I mean, Ranches Santana is more of a barefoot luxury, coastal community, surf area. Um, you know, McCool, they have like a award-winning 18 hole golf course. And it's, it's way, way, way fancier. You know, it, this is Rancho Santana is super, super nice, but people are not coming here to dress up, you know, in like a blazer to go to the fine dining restaurant and stuff. And it's, this doesn't attract golfers. It attracts more like people that are interested in yoga and surf and mountain biking and hikes and stuff. So they're different properties. And again, McCool is closed indefinitely until the Payless family feels like reopening it. I'm sure they will. I hope they do because, you know, it brings so much attention to Nicaragua um, itself. And they're only like a, they're like a 20 minute drive down the coast. So it's in the same area. Um, but um, yeah, that's my answer to, to Morgan's Rock and McCool versus Ranchers in Montana. I just think that Ranchers in Montana, like all the amenities that are available there on the property um, and kind of the variety of it, the variety of accommodations, it's one of those places that it would be hard pressed, not like that it wouldn't fit the profile of your clients wanting to go there. But, it, you know, if they're golfers, they would love to go to McCool if it would be open. Um, um, there's a couple I saw um, answer real quick. Um, I saw this good option for a solo traveler. I would say totally. I think the wonderful thing about Rancho Santana is that it's really great for a group of any size. So one traveler or, you know, 20 travelers. Um, the cool thing about if you're a solo traveler, you can stay in a guest room at the end. And you'll be able to meet people at the pool bar, at any of the restaurants. Um, the locals who live there are super friendly. Um, and, you know, they're excited to get to know any guest members. So, yeah, um, great for solo travelers or a group of any size. Also, Megan asked about the road. When do you think it'll be finished? Uh, they told us within the next two years. And from what we saw, they were working very hard on it. So, we're optimistic about that. Hopefully they can get it done even earlier. And then Devin, is Hikoro still exclusive use only? Um, no, it's no longer for um, buyouts. Uh, Hikoro is open for FIT, um, available for groups or, you know, a sole traveler, a couple, whatever, um, it's wide open. Yeah. Um, obviously there's some questions here. People that came in late, Adrienne. Yeah, they can stock the villas with groceries ahead of time. And we do still have uh, festive availability, which is amazing. At both Hikaro and Rancho Santana, there's homes, there's inns, there's residences, there's all that stuff. So, um, But I would get it in quick because now the word's out on Rancho Santana. Like this is, I think, one of the least known places. And uh, there is option for festive. So get those into us um, ASAP. And thanks, guys. I'm going to stop this because we I was trying to do this in half an hour, but there was no way we can do Ranches in Tana in just 30 minutes. Um, we're going to send you an email afterwards with the follow-up that has links to rates and videos and, and all the stuff. We can send you a copy of the presentation if you'd like as well. Um, we're going to send you a recording of the webinar and we're also send you the direct contact details for Rancho Santana. Um, as far as if you want to book this with the DMC, you can do that as well. Um, but this is a place that's very really easy to book directly as well. So, um, yeah, thanks for joining us. We're pretty fired up about Ranch Santana. I'm actually going back. My wife's going a week after next with her girlfriends, and then I'm taking my family spring break. We're actually not going to Ranch Santana. We're going diving in the Little Corn Islands on the Caribbean side, but I'm super into Nicaragua and so stoked that it's open again and stable and super safe. So um, you should come. Come visit and send your people. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you down there. <laughs>